Good evening. Welcome to St. Anne's Catholic Church as we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. The prayer intention for this Mass is for Kermit and Margaret Jensen. A couple of announcements. The daily Masses this next week are suspended to give our clergy a few days rest with their families. On New Year's Eve weekend, we will begin a new schedule of Mass times for St. Michael in Motley and St. Hubert in Bluegrass. Beginning January 1st, the 7 p.m. Saturday evening Mass will be in Motley and the 10.30 a.m. Sunday Mass will be at Bluegrass. College-age students, if you are looking for a summer job that gives you an opportunity to serve youth and share your Catholic faith, consider joining the Diocese of St. Cloud, Totus Tuus Team. Totus Tuus is a week-long summer camp for youth held at multiple parishes throughout our diocese, led by college-age young adults like you. Contact our ACC parish offices in Wadena or Staples if interested. Thank you to all of our musicians, decorators, and liturgical ministers who serve our parishes, especially for these holy days. 
Please read the bulletin every week, download the My Parish app, and check out the website marysacc.org to stay up to date with events in our area Catholic community of Mary, Mother of the Church. Now, let us turn to the Lord with our hearts to prepare to meet Jesus in word and sacrament.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I almost said good morning. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, thank you so much. What a beautiful and joyous day it is to be able to come together, celebrating the nativity of our Lord. And as we gather this, I almost said this morning again, <laughs> as we gather tonight for our vigil of this beautiful feast, we take this time to call to mind our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate. But you shall be called my delight and your land my espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. What do we celebrate at Christmas? Why are we here? Is Christmas about jingle bells, decorations, and bright lights of red and green? Or is Christmas the holiday about simply feeling good about yourself and your neighbor and trying to invite others into that same sort of warm and wonderful feeling by purchasing and exchanging gifts with them. These are good things, and it's beautiful to participate in them as they likely have their origins in the real story of Christmas. But they themselves are not the reason for this season. And when we participate in them, we should keep this real reason for this season in our hearts. The real story of Christmas actually begins at the very beginning. Genesis tells us that God made us very good in his own image and likeness, but our first parents rejected the image of God in which we were made, committing the original sin. The consequence of sin is that we chose separation from God and his plan. Hell is the name that we give to the eternal state of this separation from right relationship with God. Hell is the final destination and consequence of sin. However, 
God chose to give us another chance. Now he could have accomplished this by removing all suffering, pain, evil, and disorder from our lives. But that would have effectively involved zapping us into obedience, like robots. We would lose our dignity and our capacity to love because it would have meant stripping away our free will. Instead, he chose to teach us that he can be trusted. All the way back from the moment of the original sin, he promised that he would not abandon us. From the seed of faith he found in the heart of Abraham, he grew a family into a tribe, a nation, a people particularly his own, and he taught them to rise above the petty self-indulgences and disordered behaviors of the people around them in order to show them the beauty of the nature of what he had originally designed and intended for the human heart. He taught them the nature of love and the human heart's capacity for reciprocal love, which reflects the image of God's own heart. And when the world was ready, he sent us his only begotten son to overturn the separation from himself we had forged through sin. By his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus Christ has won us hope in being restored to right relationship with God for eternity. But as I've said, he didn't accomplish this by zapping us into obedience. He showed us the way back to himself and invited us to follow him in his way to the blessed life of heaven. Now, now we are free to choose. We can choose to cling to hell by holding on to our allegiance with sin and Satan, just living in the way of this world. Or, we can reject that allegiance and follow him. This is the joy of Christmas, the hope born in our hearts at the birth of the God-man, Jesus Christ. On the most basic level, God has shown us that evil and vice lead to the disordering and trepidation of our souls whereas good and virtue lead to the right ordering and happiness of our souls. We no longer live in a time in which our culture helps to form us in our discipleship. Our culture is quickly devolving in hostility toward the gospel and therefore also toward the church. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to us. Just as when I repeatedly commit certain grave sins and experience the disorders that arise within myself from my choice, so our country is experiencing now the disorders of many evils in which we have so long engaged. Through abortion, we've sanctioned the slaughter of tens of millions of babies in our country alone. Contraception has poisoned the hearts of our young people against the gift of new life by separating the sexual act from that gift. Our culture now exalts a kind of preeminence of promiscuous pleasure-seeking devoid of the natural consequence of the sexual act. We use terms like unplanned pregnancies and speak of the mass genocide of the most vulnerable members of our society as a right of choice. History looks back upon the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime during the Second World War with disgust. I pray that one day, Americans will look back upon our passive sentimentality regarding these issues with at least as much disgust, because that would mean that our nation finally came out 
of its unwitting stupor of our permissibility in the face of such ghastly evil. But on this day, on this day, Christmas Day, we are invited to reflect upon the hope brought to us by the arrival of that Christ child and upon the choice that his coming lays before us. How are you living your life right now? The unfortunate reality of our time is that we can't rely upon our culture to help us keep our hearts set on him. In fact, our culture now pressures us to turn our hearts from him to lesser things. What are those things which you consider to be the foremost priorities of your morning, your afternoon, your evening, and your night each day? Do they lead you closer to Christ? Where do you invest your time? Is your heart set upon the hope of Christ? Or are you content to settle for what this world has to offer you instead? Is today for you merely about jingling bells, the lights, the presents, and that good feeling that you get and, praise God, try to share with others? Or is this day about the joy stirred within your heart by the hope won for you in Him? Are you truly striving for heaven? For the Christ child who has come among us this day, or are you content with what the world offers? If your heart is already set on Him, praise God, but be vigilant because we live in a time of increasing hostility toward our faith. On the other hand, if you have until now been content to live what our culture would consider to be an ordinary or worldly way of life, prioritizing your work, your wealth, your reputation, or your gratification of certain pleasures over your commitment to daily prayer, your regular reception of the sacraments, or the single-minded focus that striving to be a saint is the most beautiful passion with which your life can be driven, then I challenge you to consider, at the end of time, what that you have prioritized in your life will have truly mattered the most. We were not made for this broken world. The Christ child came on that first Christmas to conquer this world and its ruler, the real enemy, sin and Satan. In this Christmas season, may we look beyond all the flashy commercial stuff with which our culture distracts us into the heart of the true reason for this season. May we set our hearts upon the Christ child, the King who has come among us this Christmas. Because of the, the singularly unique nature of our feast day that we celebrate today, Christmas Day itself, the Church invites us during the Creed, when we speak of uh, the Lord coming down from heaven and becoming incarnate of the Virgin Mary, if you look on page 13, the very top of page 13 of your, of your worship aids tonight, 
When we reach that point, uh, if you are able, I invite you to please kneel. We'll just kneel for just a moment right there uh, in the midst of our creed. The church invites us to kneel as, as kind of uh, an additional celebration of that, of that particular mystery in which we're caught up. But uh, if you're not able, then please do remain standing. But together now, my brothers and sisters, let us, pro let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering now our prayers and petitions, we offer them before God, our loving Father. For Pope Francis's intentions for December, that catechists summoned to the, announce the word of God may be its witness, witnesses with courage and creativity and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that through their work, they may continue to spread the good news of our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, especially those with newborn children, that they may follow the example of Blessed Mary and Joseph, who so lovingly welcomed the infant Christ into their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those separated from the ones they love at this time, that the child of Bethlehem may draw them into the consoling warmth of his family feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from natural disasters, especially those affected by recent tornadoes, that they may receive the help they need to rebuild what was lost, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all who shared our Christmas joy in times past on the earth, that they may come to eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, with grateful hearts, we stand before you this day and we ask that you hear the prayers we have offered, for we make them through Christ our Lord.
Brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them, you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things, things invisible. And so, with, our with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glo glory as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, 
and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, and celebrating this most sacred night on which blessed, the blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see the salvation of our God.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose mystery, whose heavenly mystery, we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There's, uh, well, first of all, I guess, um, <clears throat> all of the, uh, Moms and dads who brought the kiddos and stuff. Praise God. <laughs> I love hearing that. Uh, I love a little competition for my homily. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you are visiting us, I totally forgot to say this at the beginning. If you're visiting us, welcome to St. Anne's. Praise God that you're here, and I hope that this is a blessed time that you're spending with family, or I guess traveling through, or whatever brought you to us today. But uh, for those who are... Who, who have already heard my introduction, they already know I'm, I'm the second oldest of nine kids and I got 29 nephews and nieces. So <laughs> this is, uh, today has nothing on hanging out with my family. <laughs> so <laughs> moms and dads, thank you for bringing the kiddos. It was a, it's, it's just beautiful to hear them too. I hope you have a blessed Christmas. Now, you might have noticed if you were paying close attention, I actually forgot to say the blessing <laughs> After the petitions, I was supposed to have the blessing of the nativity scene. So I'm going to go ahead and have the blessing of our nativity scene here at the very beginning of our Christmas season at this time as well. And you can just remain standing where you are. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you manifest your love when our need for a savior was great. You sent your son to, to be born of the Virgin Mary. To live to our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us and savior of all who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and um, praise God, it's, it's a joyful feast that we celebrate today. I, I don't have any special announcements beyond all of that, uh, other than simply to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. And know that you are all in our, <laughs> thank you. And uh, know that you are all in our prayers as well, and um, praise God. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who crawl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As is tradition, please join in singing Silent Night. It's found in your worship aid. Oh. 
Yeah.